So what you actually see here is just a cool sample because it's the out of the box wrapper that you got with it. But we actually, what I show you here is I do a lot of things with this because as you see here, actually it is embedded on a page and the page theme here, which also has a new header that is coming out uh, pretty soon, says that it's a teal theme, but my web part is still blue in here, right? There is also one another option that you have to consider when you develop or design your web part is the section background. So when you edit the page and you go over here and say you want to edit the section, then you have different color variants, right? Uh, so you have these neutral one, you have these soft one, and you also have the strong one, which is actually inverts the complete web part, the, uh, the, the complete site theming that you have on the SharePoint side, right? Uh, and as you see now, we are, have pretty fixed colors. We don't have really uh, much control of it right now, but I show you how you, to gain control about this on this. And the web part is always blue. And we are lucky that the screen blue works somewhat, but we want to actually make this exactly to follow the, the theming pattern for, that Microsoft provides us. And for this, we actually use something which is now available in, in the web standards, which is named CSS variables. And I need want to explain you a little bit about CSS variables, what they are do. Actually, the official name of CSS variables is CSS custom properties, because it allows you to define custom properties in CSS. And I have here on a code pen a, a small sample. And what you see up here, root means the document root in this case. And I have here dash dash primary minus color is defined as pink. And this is exactly how you define a variable. So this defines my primary color as pink. Then I have another variable in here, dash dash uh, text minus color to black. And this defines actually my uh, the text color that I want, that I want to use. What you see on the on the left side, I here I have a, a small box div with some lorem ipsum in there. And when I want to use this variables, actually, I say just background color, then use the keyword var and define which custom properties in CSS I want to use. Dash dash primary color gives us the pink as a background for this box. And I also have the uh, color here set to the regular text color set to var dash dash text minus color. When I have an alternative boxes, and this is important even for our web parts, because I have here a, a, a box two, which also defines the primary color and the primary text color. Uh, and whenever you see variables inside such an element, and you always need to have a, a, a scope of such an element in there, so it just defines for this box and the following elements in there, the primary color to black and the text color to yellow. So when I copy now the box template from the first box below, actually, after I redefined my variables, you see the box is actually, again, pink with, with a black text on it. This is somehow we are we can perfectly scope with CSS variables where are actually our color values are affected on. Right. So right now, still blue, still the old classic Office UI Fabric uh, theme in here. And actually what we want to do is we want to enable our web part to have the theming, uh, be, uh, to, to have a, an object actually that, that provides us the theming. So the first thing in an SPFX solution, what you need to do is to enable the support theme variants. And there is one important part there because when you try, even have tried on a darkened background, uh, a regular web part which has not set this property in the manifest, then it you have always see a white background. When you enable this by the uh, support theme variants, then this white background will be automatically be gone, and you don't need to have some CSS in there that actually removes the or sets the background color to, to transparent. But this property in the web part manifest actually does this for you. So what we actually do in the web part and we have JavaScript and we want to convert uh, JavaScript somehow to CSS back and CSS variables, variables allow us to do us this, right? So when we take a look at the web part code, so then you have to import actually uh, some objects from the ESP component base. 
And what you do on the init of the web part, this is a new function that you need to write. You request a service scope and the theme provider in this case. And then if you're lucky, you get, you try to, uh, you can say try get theme, uh, and then you get the theme of the current section back. And this, the thing why I say this, uh, because there's uh, some things that are actually not supported in there right now, but uh, I, I think there will be change. For example, if you have your web part on a full canvas page, then you won't get anything back from the theme variant, so you cannot use it. And for this scenario, we have a really, really old object, which is the window theme state, the theme, which actually has also the uh, CSS colors, the theme colors actually in there, and this is also supported in SharePoint 2019, right? So this window theme object exists in SharePoint 2019 still, and the other theme variants up here only exist on the SharePoint Online version. So what we actually get back from, from the theme variant, let me go over to my browser here, and we get back an object which has then in there uh, some, the effects like the elevation they are defined in Office UI Fabric. We have in here even the fonts, how they are defined. So we have here an object that says font large, which means the large font. We have and this is more important, we have palettes in here. The palettes is actually the Office UI Fabric palette. And what you see here is you have a button background, you have a button border. So whenever you need to want to create custom buttons like this, then, then you can reference these JavaScript variables. But instead of using it in JavaScript, with CSS variables, I show you a way how you can use it directly in your CSS. So what else do we have in here beside the palette? We have semantic colors in here also, because the palette only gives us a theme darker, theme alternative, uh, button backgrounds, and so on and so forth. So what I actually do, uh, th this is the, the object actually I get back when I, when I request a theme, and it's in here. When I said try get theme, then I get the theme variant back, and then I have the semantic colors, I have the palettes, I have the effect in here. There's the, the reason why I use this uh, in this array notation is because there is still uh, there's a small issue because it is and should be supported in, I guess, in 1.12, it will come out that we have all these slots that are available on the theme variant object available in SharePoint Framework. For now, I need to help myself and trick a little bit TypeScript to get access to these effects. So this is actually the console debug is actually this piece that you have seen that outputs me the theme variant object in the browser. And what I do now with the set CSS variables is I pass, get the object keys from the, from the theming object and write it directly to this DOM element, which is actually the first DOM element of our web part and set style and set property. This seems like for people that are aware that are set the style here, that are set an inline style. But what I actually do with this, and with this nomenclature, with the dash dash and then the key name, is I just define a custom property on my DOM element that then dribbles down to all the elements that I have in there, right? So when I actually check my web part from a CSS perspective, what I have then is you see it here on the element, on this element, I have dash dash background color, I have the background framework, I have a link color, I have a primary button background, and all these theme variants are now available as a CSS variable, okay? So actually to fix this web part and make this thing seem a, a variable, uh, I just have to go to my CSS in here, and we have here by default the background color, which is said it's theme dark and instead of using the background color theme dark i can say var dash dash theme dark and i actually don't even need this can refresh my page and it should green it is green now so when we take a look at all the section variants that we have in here, and I created a separate page for this, where we have a white, where we have a gray, where we have a, a, some bluish uh, soft tone, and then we have the inverted ones. So what ha happens actually here when I refresh the page, you see the first ones, this is a, some, I'm not sure if you perfectly see it, but this is a one, a, a little bit lightish, lighter 
green that we have in here, then it's get a little bit darker, even more darker. And then the inverted theme we have here just changed the background of the web part, but it's actually white because it inverts our complete theme, right? So when I go over to my web part again, then we have something like in here, um, uh, MS minus font color white and what I can see in here. And I don't do it like this because I want to have here another thing in here. I guess the button background text and I have more. So we have the theme dark in here. Yeah, button background text it is. Instead of the color white, I use the button background color, uh, the button text color, actually. Again, I use a CSS variable in here. And when I refresh now the page, so I have the, the white ones in here because the button text is white on this first three variants of the theme of the theme and on the inverted one I actually get also an inverted color for that so I get here the green one and I can do this with all the properties uh, that are or all these these ses variables that I use in here and I actually have done this already so let's take this one and overwrite this so what I have here, for example, then I have the primary button text because it's always defined in here. Then I have here the theme primary again, theme primary. I want to have a color, this sun fix because it was white in here. I want to have the primary button text. And when I compile now this, and then I have everything looking and matching perfectly theme. So there's might a little bit an issue here with, with with the with the contrast of the web part, but overall, this is how you can make your web part work pretty well, whatever the user chooses. And from a coding perspective, what we also have in here. So not only that I have defined in here that the CSS variables directly on the DOM element, but what we also have in here, we have here a theme provider theme changed event. So whenever the user changes the theme, it automatically changes the styling of the web part. And I'll show you this in, in, in SharePoint in a bit. And let's take first a look at the handle theme changes. So what we have in here, we get a new object in there, which is our changed theme. And what I do then is I simply redefine the CSS variables. And because CSS variables can set at any time in the browser directly, it automatically styles all my elements that use this uh, CSS variable. And what you see here is actually, and I could do a this.render, but I actually need, don't need to do this because CSS variables is always like this. You have it defined on your page, and whenever you redefine it, all the element that use this variable, unless it's overwritten by some local styling, use automatically this, this styling. And what I can do now is here on this, on this page, I can say here, change look. I haven't refreshed it yet. I can then pick a theme, which is, for example, the red one, and automatically the web part changes accordingly to the theming that I preview, just preview. So this is the orange version. It just up, it, so it, it just triggers the event handler in my web part and then redefines the CSS variables in there. Or even if I want to use, for example, a dark yellow, which is also an inverted theme that uh, is out of the box in SharePoint available. So I have here now the yellow background. And of course, I have a inverted one on the, on the, because it turns it back to light, I have the yellow one in here. And this is basically how it works. As I said, for example, here, what I have is a full canvas page and I don't have yet on a, I hope this will be fixed in 1.12, is uh, I don't have here the theme provider available at the moment. But because I have this fallback in here that actually where I use the window.theme state and we just take a sneak peek into this object in, in here, these properties actually are 100% matching what we have in the theme variant in here. So I can perfectly reuse this. And what I did here, I just used the window.theme state object, can refresh the page. And the web part here on a, on a full canvas page also get automatically becomes green. So, but 
what if you want to use actually this same method in Teams? Well, you can use and this web part in theme, uh, in Teams, and I already deployed it to one of my teams in here in my demo tenant. And what we have here now is the blue one, where it doesn't pick up a styling or theming like that. So what I can do now is, and I haven't refreshed this one, let's refresh this because it now supports our themes. Uh, and it actually should also support here theme as well. What I recognized yesterday, the last time I did a demo on uh, uh, on the Office Developer Bootcamp here in Vienna, is I really got the colors from Teams inside there. I So the buttons were really purple and, and not blue like it is here. But it's what you see actually here, it, it's a little bit different blue that we have by default on our SharePoint side. Somewhere this blue must be coming from. But what you also can do in here is, for example, when I go to my settings and I want to use it on a dark theme, then this automatically also adjusts the, the, the branding of the web part uh, on a dark theme or on a light theme. And so I have one method with CSS variables that, that I can use across the whole platform and always make sure that my web part are actually perfectly themed. Another benefit is this, and this is more like for people that works actually uh, with, with developers, uh, with designers together, is, for example, when someone said, yeah, what, I designed a new web part for you. Can you give me, uh, for example, a complete color set so that I can use it in my design? So what you actually have to do, you just have some sort of sample web part. You can go in here, grab the style, uh, or fetch the style that ha only has the, has the CSS variables on it. Uh, go in here, just paste it in, and define it as a CSS. Yeah, uh, have some. Yeah, it doesn't know it, probably. Um, but you can pass this file then to a designer and he can use it even when you just use HTML and CSS. What also we have in here, for example, what you see in the, the round border, uh, we have a, a property here, which means dash dash rounded corners. And let's make our web part a little bit more fluenty and round the corners. So I can go in here. Uh, where do I have a border? I have here a border minus radius, just define var minus round round corners, and refresh the page, and hopefully we see it, because two is a little bit small, but I guess you get the idea. So you have everything that Office UI Fabric with the theming provides you, uh, and, and can use it directly here with CSS variables. One uh, caution here is uh, the CSS variables are not supported in Internet Explorer 11, but Internet Explorer 11, on the other hand, will, won't be supported in Office 365 in August. So you still can have the border colors here defined like this. So then you have at least a fallback variant of this and then define the variables or use the variables because CSS is doesn't throw an arrow when it's simply Internet Explorer 11 ignores when some variable definition is in there that they don't understand. And that's basically it. Thank you, Stefan. That was really awesome demo. Great to see the use of variables. Uh, I, I certainly am not an expert in this, so it's always cool to see the latest CSS tricks. Mm -hmm.